and welcome to a seated version, for some reason, a seated version on this wonderfully frigid Wednesday of Mathematics Wednesday. Today our topic is we're looking at solving triangles that don't have right angles, where I don't have the ability to use sine law. You'll recall from last time, when I have a triangle, and let's say I know angle A, let's say this angle is 100 degrees, and this side length over here is 10. And then I tell you this side over here is, uh, well, let's call that eight. And I want to find this angle. I can use sine law. And the reason I can is because I have an opposite pair of side and angle knowledge. Oh, and I need to share my screen. I said, oh, I'm going to share my screen and never unshare it. And then I unshared it. Where's the meat? There it is. Share my screen. Share entire screen. There we go. Hide. Okay, Fisher, was that your, is that why your hand is up? Yeah. Great. You. Okay, there we go. So let's get back to it. Okay, so when I have these opposite pair of angle and side, I can use sine law. Sine law is much simpler than what we're going to, it's, it's, it's one or two steps simpler than what we're going to look at today, which is cosine law. Okay, so we are going to learn how to use this to solve side lengths and to solve unknown angles. So let's take a look. Let's get right into it. When we're solving a side, we need, count them, three pieces of information. And this is true for any triangle we look at. There's how many pieces of information total in a triangle? Six. And what are they? Three sides, three angles. A triangle will be made of three angles and three sides. And if you have three of those pieces, you can solve the whole triangle using trigonometry. Doesn't matter anything else about the triangle, you can solve it. There are some times where there's multiple possible triangles, but we'll look at those in grade 11. So we won't fool you with those this year. Okay, so here we can, we need three pieces of information, but we don't have an opposite pair of information, okay? If we have an opposite pair, just use your sine law, which to recap is sine A, over a okay this angle over this side is equal to sine b over little b is equal to sine c that's an s sine big c over little c okay we need one of these ratios to use this and then we can calculate the other pieces of information if we have even a, as little as one other known so we need these two knowns and then one other thing we can use sine law Today we're going to be using cosine law, so let's keep looking at cosine law. When we're solving for the missing side, we need two sides and another angle, the angle between the two sides, okay? Because that would be our three pieces of information. Let's say we know angle A and we know side B and C, the two opposite sides. We can use this formula here. This is cosine law, okay? Where I have this side squared, is equal to all of these things. Okay, so I actually need, uh, yeah, I can solve for this side using this formula. All right, let's take a look at an example. So here, given that triangle ABC, let's solve for side C, okay? My first step is going to be to copy out the equation, okay? A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2 times BC times cosine of big A, okay? There's my cosine law. Now, here's a problem, and this is, I am going to share with you, spoiler alert, the most common student mistake when using cosine law. This is set up, angle A is related to side A here, but I've been asked to solve for side C. So I can, if I want, rename my sides. I could rename this A, and I could rename this little A, and then I will call this big B, and this big C. And then this would be little side B and little side C. And then I can use this formula. Or I can be real smart and remember that the labeling of sides is totally arbitrary. So I could write this as B squared, or sorry, C squared here. <laughs> I could be really smart and do something really dumb. That's a classic Mr. Jennings thing. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, the other two sides, okay? C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, minus 2 times AB, okay, not C, okay? Here, A 
does not show up here. It does not show up there. It only shows up in the angle. Okay. Cosine of C. I just changed all the A's to C's and then this will work. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to rename my corners. I'm just going to remember that I could if I wanted to. And I want to solve for this side here, C. So let's put in all of our knowns and then we will solve for this unknown side here, C. Okay. So you're going to copy down this formula and you're going to copy down my method here on your handout. This is equal to, we'll call this one A. Sure. Call this A and this B. Okay. And here's angle C. Okay. So 11 squared plus H squared minus two times sub into brackets, 11 times sub into brackets, eight times the cosine of angle C, which is 37 degrees. That's cool. I was just working with 37 degrees in another problem. All right. Now just evaluate, but don't forget this is equal to C squared. Okay. Second most common mistake is to then work this out and say C is therefore equal to 200 or something. How can I have a triangle with 11, eight and 200? Not possible. Okay, that's a, that's a long stick with two wavy things on either side. That ain't no triangle. They don't touch. Okay, so now let's work this out. C squared is equal to 121 plus 64 minus 2 times 11. That's 22. 22 times 8. 22 times 8 is uh, 176. 176 times the cosine of 37. Well, let's find out the cosine of 37. I'm going to do it here, okay? It's just a little faster. 37, take the cosine of that, tells me 0 0.7986. Sure. 0 0.7986. How accurate are you trying to be, Mr. Jennings? Very accurate, I guess. I took four decimal places, okay? So now, third most common student error. Oh, so, so much like just pearls that I'm throwing out here, just valuable stuff, okay? Is that students will add these two together and then subtract this number. Ouch, that's a bed miss mistake. Do this multiplication first before you do this addition and subtraction, okay? So don't do that. You'll lose a, one mark on my tests or you'll lose all the marks on someone else's tests because I'm a big softy. Okay, C squared is equal to 121 plus 64. That happens to be 185 minus... 176 times this. I already have that on my calculator. So I'm just going to multiply that by 176 equals 140.5598. I'm just going to do 140.5 minus 140.5. Do this multiplication first. Now evaluate that. Uh, I'm going to subtract 185 from this. That's equal to negative four. That's equal to 44.5. C squared equals 44.5. Okay, now notice if I wrote down here, this side is therefore 44.5, very common student error. You want to be a student that checks your work. It's okay to make mistakes if you catch them. In fact, it's really good for your learning. Notice that I can't have a side 11, a side 8, and a side 44. People know why not, right? Even if I stretch them as close as touching as possible, it's like trying to make a triangle from my wrists with my fingers. Eh, I can't get my fingertips to touch because these sides are not long enough. Okay, it's like they're waving around on some really long thing here. If I use my elbows as a bending point, now I can get a triangle. It's a very obtuse triangle, but it still touches. Okay. What you can't have is one of the sides being longer than the sum of the other two. The longest possible side here would be 19, and it wouldn't be a triangle, it would be a line. So 18.9 or something like that would be the longest for C. Okay, now take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 44, I know that's longer than 6, but shorter than 7. It's going to be a, a, a right in the middle. I think it's about 6.5. So I take, um, I'm going to just uh, um, say this minus, yeah, okay, so anyway. I'm just going to use 44.5. I'm going to take the square root of that. It tells me 6.67. Okay, so that really makes sense. This is 6.7 long. Okay, C is equal to 6.7. Doesn't that look like it could be 6.7, but it certainly could not be 44. Okay, so you want to be the person that checks your work and just looks at it and says, does that look reasonable? That looks reasonable. 
Okay, so that's the road to a solution. Now I'm going to pause the video. You're going to try this example here. So um, Fisher, you want to take a screenshot of that? Or I'll share with you the, uh, actually, let me share with you the handout. I'll put it in the, the D2L for you. I should have done that earlier. Okay, I'll do that now. Uh, but I'm going to go back. You're going to work on this one. You're going to solve for side E. What side E? It's over here, side E. Solve for that side. So go ahead and try that. And then we'll resume in, give you two minutes to do that. So the letters in cosine law are totally arbitrary, but they do have to line up. And I'll show you what I mean by line up. So let's go back here to this, uh, this that you have on your page. When I'm looking at, uh, when I'm looking at uh, this formula here, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, take a look at what that means. It means there's a relationship between an angle and the, and the opposing side. We already know that these two things are related from sine law, and this is how they're related through the other two sides, okay? The relationship is, if I have the angle over here, this angle, that's going to be the side that's over there alone on the other side of the equation. The B and the C that show up here and here and here and here are the other two sides. So let me, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll color code here and you'll see that the colors have to line up in this way. So here, this is the red, this is critical, little a and angle a. Those have to be set up there. And then the opposing sides, which we'll do in purple, this and this, these two sides go here, 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 and here. Now you can get that same idea just by relabeling all your sides. The question that we're working on is given triangle DEF, solve for side E. So I could use that equation if I say, well, this is now side, this is angle A and this is side A. This is little B, big B, and then little B, and C and big C. I could do that and then just use A squared is equal to C squared plus B squared minus uh, B, 2BC cosine of A. Yeah, it matters. It's going to make a difference. If here, what I would do is I would say, um, I'll get people started here. This is E squared. This is without relabeling anything. Okay, I'm just going to do E squared. E squared, this side, is equal to uh, D squared. Oh, not B. Sorry, D. Little dyslexic moment. I do sometimes invert my lowercase d's. D squared plus f squared, that's this and this, minus 2 df cosine big E. Yes, ma'am. So now let me, uh, I'll leave you up here in case people are still copying that down and copying my road to a solution. All right, so people are making some good discoveries. Some of those discoveries are that the co value of cosine that they're getting for 95 degrees is a very small negative number. Is that right? Yeah. Very small negative number. Very close to zero, but negative. It still works for our formula, though. Let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to put in our unknown here. We don't know it, but we're going to find it. D squared. Let's call this D. Oh, this one D here. 7 squared. 7 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 7 times 6 cosine of 95 degrees. Did people get that? Get that far? Okay, now let's simplify what we can. We can do the exponents, we can do this multiplication, and we can actually evaluate cosine of 95. So let's do all those things. 7 squared, what's that? 49. I'm teaching only grade 9 next semester, and man, am I going to drill them on squares. They're going to know their squares, okay? If you don't know your squares, just know that it's useful to know your squares and you should start practicing. 7 times 7 is 49. 6 times 6 is... 6 times 6? 36. Minus 2 times 7 times 6. Who can do 2 times 7 times 6 in their head? And get 84. <laughs> I'm so impatient. I'm so impatient. I just like... 
Tell me, tell me the answers. 84 here, okay? 2 times 7, 14. 14 times 6, 60 plus 24, 84. That's not the way I did it in my head. I did 2 times 6 is 12, and I know my 12 times tables by 7 is 84. Okay, cosine of 95. Well, punch it on your degrees ready calculator. 95, take the cosine of that. Negative 0 0.08715. Okay, so I'm going to go with negative 872. So I'm just going to put that in brackets, negative 0 0.0872, okay? There's the value of cosine 95. Remember, cosine is just a number. This number, another common student mistake, but not as common as the ones I've been going over, is like multiplying this 95 by stuff that's out there. No, don't do that, okay? Evaluate cosine of that angle. This is an angle. These are side lengths. We don't multiply angles and side lengths. Cosine gives you a ratio of side lengths. That's what's useful. Okay. Now let's keep going here. Negative 84 times negative this. Notice that a negative times a negative is a positive. Notice that. Okay. Now what does that mean? Cosine becomes negative when it's greater than 90. When this angle is greater than 90, notice that's going to make this side longer. Negative times a negative makes a positive. Ends up making E squared longer, which makes E longer. Okay? So that's that's why that's happening. All right? Now, 49 plus 36. Don't subtract the 84. Multiply this first. Okay? So 49 plus 36 is what? I'm very impatient. Okay? That should be faster. 49 plus 36. You should be able to tell me that's 85. And then minus 84, oh, that's just 1. No, it's not, because I have to multiply this first. So definitely multiply first, okay? Negative 84 times negative this. I'm just going to go multiply by 84, make that negative, equals positive 7.32. So I'm going to be adding 7.32108, blah, 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 don't care, okay? And then I'm going to add that, and that's going to give me E squared, okay? 85 plus 7, what's that? What's E squared? 85 plus 7.32, what is it? Good. 92.32, okay, very good. So now to find E, I just take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to add this to 85 on my calculator, and then I get 92.32, and then I just take the square root of that, and it tells me, 9.608. So 9.6 is going to be plenty detail here. E is equal to 9.6. Circle it. That's my answer. You can write it on here, 9.6. Now, does that look reasonable? 6 inches, 7 inches, 9.6 inches. Looks reasonable because 6 plus 7 is 13. If I stretch that out all the way with no angle, it'd be 13 long. But because it's kinked a little bit, it's shorter than 13. But it is going to be the longest side because this will, by definition, be the biggest angle in the triangle. It can't be a bigger angle than that one because the rest are going to be less than 90. Okay, let's keep going. Good work. Now, here's how we would do a word problem. Again, the word problem is going to start with a great diagram. It doesn't have to be an artistically beautiful one, but it has to organize your numbers in your thinking. John rides his bike due east. Oh, sorry, it's... Johnny rides his bike due east for 10 kilometers. That would take you to Wasaga Beach or into the bay? Anyway, he goes due east for 10 kilometers. That's length 10. Angela rides her bike east 25 degrees south. So she's riding this way. Okay, She's riding 25 degrees south of east. So I know this angle here. And then she rides for 7 kilometers. So that's a seven. We want to know how far John and Angela are from each other. So we want to know this side. I don't know what it is. Call it little a. Call this big side a. And now find me a. Okay? Start with your diagram. And now go for it. Do it. a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. Put in my values. b squared is 100. C squared is 49. 2 times 10 times 7 gives me minus 140.
cosine of 25. That is what the value of a squared is going to be. a squared is equal to 149 minus 140 cosine of 25. Okay. Cosine of 25 is going to be positive. That means this is going to be subtracting from that. So that's going to make it smaller. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Um, here, uh, I'm, I'm going fast because I want to show you these don't take as long as what I'm doing, but 10 squared is 100. 7 squared is 49. 10 times 7 times negative 2 is negative 140. Okay, let's go. So I have here cosine of 25. Take the cosine of that is 0 0.9. I'm going to multiply that by 140, negative. And that's going to be negative 126. So what I get here is 149 minus 126.9. Okay. That's the value of this. Just evaluate it on my calculator, a squared. Okay. So I'm going to add that to 149. Gives me 22.11. A squared is equal to 22.12, okay? Taking the square root of both sides, I expect this to be bigger than 4, smaller than 5, because my squares are 16 and 25. Those are the adjacent squares. Those are the squares of 4 and 5, respectively. So I predict that this is going to be about 4.8. Let's take the square root. 4.7. Okay, A equals 4.7. So John and Angela are 4.7 kilometers apart after John rides 10 kilometers that way and Angela rides at a 25 degree angle to him 7 kilometers. There's now 4.7 between them. 4.7 kilometers between them. Okay. Good. Now, we can also use cosine law to solve for unknown angles. But I'll leave this up for a second to let you copy. Okay. Now, while I'm doing that, while I'm leaving that up and having you copy the solution, um, what I will point out is that Pythagorean theorem, it's a special version of cosine law. Uh, sure. Yeah. Here is a right angle triangle. Okay. So if I called this angle A, this would be the longest side, right? A, that's the hypotenuse. And then call this one B and C. And let's use cosine law here instead of just Pythagorean theorem. And we'll find we don't need cosine law for a special reason. Okay, so yeah, people agree that this is a, you know, here we go, a squared equals b squared plus c squared. That's what I'm used to seeing. But what's this minus 2bc cosine of big A? Well, what value is a? I have a right angle triangle. A is the hypotenuse. What is this angle here? 90 degrees. Any predictions on what the value of cosine 90 is going to have to be for cosine law to be true here? Given that we already know that this is Pythagorean theorem, that should be all I need. So what value should cosine A be if, if A is 90 degrees? What's the value of cosine 90 without using your calculator? No, it has to be zero. Yeah, so if you punch 90 and take the cosine of that, it tells you zero. Okay, So there, that's what that's showing is when I have a right angle triangle like this, if I used cosine law, this would be minus 2 times some side length B times some side length C times zero. Cosine of 90, cosine of 90 is equal to zero. So this all is zero. And so that doesn't happen, and we only have Pythagorean theorem. Okay, okay. so um, if you need a little more time to copy that down, I'll link this in the D2L. Let's keep going. So now we're going to solve, uh, learn how to solve problems with non-right angle triangles using cosine law to solve for angles. Okay. If we had a right angle, we would just use trigonometry to solve for that side. Uh, and it would be like much simpler. Here is a right angle triangle. Let's say I don't know any of the sides, but I know this is 3, 4, 5, and I want to know angle theta. Okay. What I would do is I can use any one of my trigonometric, trigonometric identities, and I could write down sine of theta, this is one of them, is equal to 4 over 5, opposite over adjacent. 
And then to solve for theta, I take the inverse sine of both sides. And that will tell me the value of sine theta. So here, 0 0.8, and I take the inverse sine of that. It tells me that, uh, yeah, that that's uh, 53 degrees. I drew my triangle wonky. So theta is equal to 53 degrees. Notice that was pretty painless, right? That was pretty quick. What I can do if I don't have a right angle triangle is I need cosine law. And cosine law here, I put it back onto the opposite side of the sheet. So you're going to flip your sheet over and to take these angles. If I have all three sides, remember, I need three pieces of information to solve a triangle. And any three pieces will do except for angle, angle, angle. Angle, 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 I don't know how big the triangle is. But I can solve the ratios of the sides, and all any triangle that it could be would be similar. Okay, But if I have one side and two angles, or I have one angle and two sides, I can always solve the triangle. In this case, if I have all three sides, the triangle is solvable. It's not like having three angles. Okay, And I would use this formula here. This is just cosine law reorganized. Okay, so let's, because I, I don't remember this, but I remember cosine law. So let's see how we can get to this if you forget what this looks like. And you can remember it yourself by remembering. So I write down my cosine law. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. I remember that part because of Pythagorean theorem. Minus 2BC cosine of A. And I remember this part because I know little a and big A are opposite each other in these equations. And then BC, I know I'm multiplying by these sides again. So that's why they go in there. Okay. Now let's let's solve this for cosine of A because that's what we've done here. So what I'm going to do is um, move these to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to have A squared minus B squared minus C squared equals negative 2 BC cosine of a okay and so now i've just i've just subtracted b squared and c squared from both sides of the equation move those over now let's get rid of this negative 2bc and i'm going to do that by dividing by negative 2bc i have to divide the whole side of that equation like this by negative 2bc okay so now that's going to cancel here and cancel here and i'm going to get uh, this glorious line, this is equal to cosine of A. So that's all that's left over there. And uh, over on this side, I'm going to have, um, let's just rewrite it a little bit, negative B squared minus C squared plus A squared. I just wrote it in the same order that we have there, all over negative 2 BC. Now I see negative on the bottom, and I don't like that. So I'm just going to flip every sign on the top, and the negatives will cancel. There. And now I have it written that way. So all I needed to do was just a few inverse operations. First, move those ones over by addition and subtraction. So subtract b squared and subtract c squared from both sides. Then they went over there. Okay. And then divide here, and that part goes down there. And the last thing is noticing that the light switch was flipped once down there. So I can just flip the light switch on everything on top. Just flip all the signs, get the, the negatives will cancel. Okay. Another way of doing that would be multiply top and bottom by negative 1. Okay. And then I get this equation. Don't memorize that one. Memorize this one. Because it's related to Pythagorean theorem much more clearly. Okay, let's keep going. So, example, solving an angle. Okay, so now here, we are going to solve this triangle for angle A. Let's make some predictions. This is the longest side, so B will be the biggest angle. So I think A will be substantially less than 90, but it is looking at a fairly large side over there, 11.6. So I think C would be the smallest angle in the triangle, and A will be a little bit bigger. I'm going to guess about 30 degrees. Anyone think they can get closer than my guess? It's not a contest. It's just, uh, you know, some co-opetition. Anyone want to make a guess there for A? So 
So I'm going to start by writing down my formula. Cosine of A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared. Yeah, right, Mr. Jennings, you don't have that memorized. Over 2BC. Actually, I just did all my inverse operations in my head. Okay, I don't, I don't have that memorized. So now I take this one and evaluate. And that's going to give me cosine of A. So let's do it. Equals B squared. Okay, so I'm solving for angle A. This is side A over here. And yes, it matters that I get this right. B and C doesn't matter, but A does because A has a different sign. So subtracting something is a lot different than adding it. So I got to get that right in there. So B squared is 15.2 squared. Can't do that in my head, but it'll be a little bit bigger than 225. Plus C squared is 7.4. So that's going to be something like, I don't know, what's that going to be? 59. Is that squared? Minus A squared is 11.6 squared. So somewhere between 121 and 144. Notice that this negative does not come along for the squaring ride. This is subtract the square of A. It's not negative A squared. It's different. This will be negative, always. Divided by 2BC. So 2 times 7.4 times 15.2. Now, I'm in the habit of punching this all on my calculator and getting the value. And that's what I would encourage you to do if you're very good at using your calculator correctly. But another thing you can do if you do tend to make errors with your calculator is just calculate the top and write it down, and then calculate the bottom and write it down. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do 15.2 squared, 231. So as I said, it's close to 252. Sorry, 240, 225. Plus... 7.4 squared, so 54, okay, plus, uh, sorry, oops, minus 11.6 squared equals 151.24 on top. 151.24. That's just evaluate that and write it down. And then 2 times 7.4 times 15.2 would be fun to do mental math, but I'm just going to do it on my calculator since it's in my hand equals uh, 224.96, 224.96. Okay, this, is that the angle that I'm trying to solve for? No. What is it? It's the cosine of that angle. No, I have to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So now I take the inverse cosine of both sides to find that A is equal to cosine inverse, put these in brackets, 151.24, divide by 224.96. Let me write that out again here. A is equal to the inverse cosine of 151.24, divide by 224. 4, 9, 6. Okay? Put that in brackets. Cosine, if you'll remember, I've said this a few times, is always a value between 1 and negative 1. Notice that this is a number that's less than 1 because the denominator bigger than the numerator. If you get a numerator that's bigger than your denominator, either your math was wrong or you're working with a triangle that can't exist in our reality. You're working with make a triangle out of the full arm span and then your hands, okay? Those ends won't touch. I could draw it and pretend that it's a triangle, but actually it's not, okay? So let's evaluate that. So I'm going to do 151, oops, 151.24 divided by 224.96 equals, and then take, I get 0 0.67, okay? So it's less than one, great. Take the inverse cosine of that, tells me, 47 degrees, 48 degrees. My guess of 30 was not total garbage, but not great, okay? It was out by 17 degrees. A is equal to 47.7 degrees, 48 degrees. Okay, let's just write down 48 degrees. And that's how you do these, okay? So take this down, and then you'll try an example yourselves. Okay, let's keep going. So the example that you'll try 
for sure you can just take a look here, is solve for this angle y when you have a nine foot side, an eight foot side, and a six foot side. You wanna solve for the side that's opposite the six foot side. So go ahead and, and try that yourselves, everybody. And then I'll pause the video here so that you can uh, get a chance to try that. Okay, let's keep going, everybody. So let's take a look here at this one. People have a measure for angle Y. Does someone have a solution? Yeah, what you got? 40.81. Oh, so yeah, that's what looks. Does that look reasonable? 41 degrees here. Yeah. Looks pretty reasonable. Less than 45. Yeah. Super. Okay, let's do it. Uh, cosine of y is going to be equal to x squared plus z squared minus little y squared. Okay, this is the one that has to be minus because it's opposite that. This is side y. Okay all divided by 2xz, okay? So you had that when you started. If you got the right answer, then that's what you need, must have started with. And then that would be equal to 9 squared plus 8 squared minus 6 squared, okay? All over 2 times 9 times 8. And then evaluate that. That's 81 plus 64 is uh, 145. Minus 6 squared, is that right, 145? Minus uh, 36 would be uh, 109. Do you get 109 on the top? Or is my mental math wrong? 109, okay, cool. 2 times 9 times 8 is uh, 144, right? Yes, 144. Yeah. So there we go. Now we know that this is, is this less than 1 or bigger than 1? I see big numbers there. Less than one or bigger than one? Less than, because top is smaller than bottom. Yeah, so, so that is a valid uh, possibility for cosine of y. Negative is okay, but negative is going to be like, if I take the cosine of this side, it might be negative because that looks to be more than 90 degrees. Okay. So let's go for it. All right. Uh, bo -bo 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 -bo. Take the inverse cosine of both sides. So y is equal to, I don't like this red line. I was going to print this without a red line next time. I'm going to put the solution down here. Y, big Y, is equal to inverse cosine of 109 over 144. Take the inverse cosine of both sides. You'll notice I just drop cosine there and put inverse cosine over there. And that's pretty much what we're doing, so long as you do the whole side of the equation there. So that's what I'm going to punch on the calculator. 109 divided by 144 equals some ugly 0 0.76, okay? Take the inverse cosine of that. I get 40.8 is 41. Y is equal to 41. And the people rejoice and the students get the correct answer. Hooray. Yero, you're being attacked by, is that Hannah's work? Or Nadia's work? Anyway, it's fine. A race, it follows a triangular course, okay? So this might be a, something you need to know as a, as a driver, if the course is triangular, you might want to know what are the angles between the different sides because that's going to influence the line that I take and the speeds that I'm able to do around those corners. So uh, the three legs of the course are in order, 2.3 kilometers, start with a good diagram, 5.9 and 6.2. Okay, so 6.2 is going to be the longest. So let's do that coming just a little bit past the halfway point and then call that the 5.9 side. Okay, so this is 5.9, and these are perfectly straight lines, as you can see. I was talking to Miss uh, Metherall because she has a similar doodad as to what I have, but she's bought special software. She can draw straight lines, and I envy her. So this is the starting, and this is the finishing leg. So we want to know angle theta over here. Okay, start and finish. So find it, everybody. Draw your diagrams and then do it.
What do people get? I'll admit it's a lot wider, like a wider angle than, uh, than I thought it was going to be. It's a bigger angle. I thought it was going to be close to like 40 degrees or something, but I'm getting something uh, smaller than that. Good deal smaller. I've got a good deal bigger. An answer, Fisher? Pardon? Do you have an answer here for this one? No, not yet. All right. So here we go. Last bit. So uh, if we know the cosine of this angle, is equal to the negative square root over there. That one is the minus one because we want to make sure that these are opposed in the triangle and they're opposed in the formula. Okay, that's the negative one and it does not show up on the bottom. Okay. So then I evaluate the top and it gives me 8.92. Then I evaluate the bottom and it gives me 28.52. I notice that this number is less than one, so I will be able to calculate an angle that will give me that cosine. And when I do cos inverse here, I get uh, oh, 72 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is 72 degrees. It's a fairly tight turn, but not super tight. Um, the other, this angle is actually larger. Ashley, what's that angle? Uh, yeah, you see, you're already able to do that in your head instantly. 86.49, 87 degrees. Okay, yeah, so that one's 87 degrees. So this one's actually very tight, this angle. And notice that the smallest angle here is opposite the smallest side. The longer these two sides got, the closer that angle will get to zero. Like if I lengthen these two sides all the way out, the angle is going to shrink, 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 shrink until it's almost zero. So that's uh, another thing that's happening there. So here are some uh, great uh, practice problems that you can do for Fisher. Uh, I will set some uh, delta math for you for cosine law. And that's it. Contact me with your questions.